Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So, uh, yeah, I'm back. Um, I keep disappearing. Um, typically, sort of winter months, I put out a video a week or three a month, something like that. Um, through this summer, um, well, I've been lucky to get one a month done. Various factors involved, um, but yeah, it's just finding the time to get in the shed. Um, so much going on in life, as, as it does, and it's been very difficult to find time to not only get in the shed, produce content, all the rest of it, but uh, I am trying guys, and uh, as and when time allows, and I get the opportunity, I do come down the shed. So, I have been busy, but uh, not in the shed, but busy online, ordering some stuff. So i got a cardboard box here, so let's say. So, let's say this is a new stuff has arrived. So, a uh, couple of parcels from Arc Euro Trade. Um, I always get asked, where did I get this, where did I get that? But So I'm going to say, Arc Euro Trade was this one in the UK. Um, so, first thing I bought was a, I have opened these before, an ER32 collet chuck that will bolt straight on to the spindle of the new lathe, or the lathe that I've been building. So, actually seems really good quality and I have tried it on the head, the register's nice and snug, everything's quite good and it looks really well finished. Um, one thing I have done is have a look at the, the nut on there to see if it's a bearing type one. It's a really nice fit on the thread, that's the first thing, I, I haven't taken this off before. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a bearing type one, however, if I'm going to be using it on the lathe, um, I have got a bearing collet nut. Um, which I bought alongside the little collet blocks I got ER32. Uh, I went for ER32 because I have a set of collets and they're all really good, or you know, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So I stuck with ER32. Um, it covers just about all the range I'm going to want to use on the small lathe. So yeah, just pretty much stuck with that. That thread is really nice on me. Um, yeah, I'm so impressed with that. Um, first time I've taken the nut off. So, yeah, so call it Chuck for the lathe. Um, the other thing I bought, now, again, Arcu Road Trade, was a quick change tool post. It's a model triple zero, quick change tool post. Now, as you all know, I've made tool posts before. I made the one that's on my Walco lathe. Oh, so just get it out of the box. You've got the tool post itself, what looks like the little handle in some paper and a plastic knob. We may be making a new one for that. <laughs> Bit of brass. I may have to order some more brass. I'm running low on brass stock. Um, I typically I try and keep a, you know, a, a foot or so of um, 10, 12 mil, you know, half inch, three quarter an inch brass bar. Try and keep stock of it. Um, but I am running low. Well, I, I've got a few little stub ends left, so I'll have to get some on order. Um, so yeah, little triple zero quick change tool post. Um, yeah, the sliding cam type. So. Again, I have had this out of the box. You can see the cam going up and down. Um, I'm going to have to fit this. Let's just take it off. Okay, it looks like an M10. Looks like an M10 bolt or stud in there. Um, it's quite a sloppy fit in the in the tool post. I may make a, a better sized one for that, so we can keep it keep it uh, from vibrating and moving around. Anyway, so I need to get the tool post fitted on the lathe, the collet chuck fitted on the lathe to see where the center is, and then you will remember if you're a regular viewer, I manufactured or made a riser block, compound slide replacement, let's call it, uh, block. Um, and obviously I've just machined this rectangular block that sits there of the correct thickness, you know, the same thickness as the original compound was. So I'm going to have to uh, get this fitted in the right location and then we'll machine some slopes and angles and what have you decide i think with this one as it's only going to do light work on this lathe i don't think i'm going to key it into a square position um i think i'll leave it so that it can be rotated on this lathe um yeah it just gives it a bit more versatility if you can rotate it. i don't think i'll bother keying it in place like i did on the uh, walco so okay that's those items um another thing that arrived um Actually, I haven't opened this, but I know what it is. Somewhere around here. Yep, little knife. So let's just open the packet. Yeah. 
So a little packet of, let me show you guys, I mean this was literally, it didn't cost a lot, it was an eBay purchase, a little packet of oil nipples, um, 6 mil diameter. So I'm going to put some lubricators in the carriage on the lathe. Um, there's none in there at present, um, you know, where you rely on lubricating the carriage by, carriage and, and the slide waste by um, basically winding them back and forth and squirting some oil on. So I'd like to have a couple of oilers on them and I make my, I may make some way wipers for it, um, which I haven't done uh, yet. I mean, there's lots of little things to do on this machine and it's all time consuming and I'm sort of knee deep in the electrics of it, which I put aside for the time being. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is look at mounting this tool post. Uh, making some decisions as to what shape it's going to be, where the quick change tool post is in relation to the block. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So the tool post, uh, tool post? <laughs> so the collet chuck didn't come with any studs or fastenings or anything, um, but I've got some nice long M6 scrub screws and they come right through to the front face and there's enough stuck out the back, so I will probably use these. These are 12.9 grade, um, so I will probably lock tight these in at a later point, um, but for the purposes of bolting it on, it's fine. And I went round looking for some uh, M6 nuts, um, and I did find that I've got three M6 nuts just, um, but yeah, I'd, I think I'm going to get some flange nuts for the back end. So let's fit this up, and then we can see where the centre height is. Okay, so let's just tighten up three nuts on the back okay um, so I have a collet at the ready um, what is it and seven to eight collet and I've got an eight mil ground centered pin here and that will just give me a clue as to where center is so next thing uh, get the tool post put it on here and see that we haven't messed up with the heights I've got one of the standard tool holders here. They're all ground, they, they look quite nice. The only thing, I, not well, not that I'm going to be using this lace or anything big, but the thickness of the bottom here is quite thin compared to the top. I'd like to have seen more meat in there. Um, but then again, I can always make um, sort of my own tool holders, you know, going forward if i got problems. Now, I thought it was going to be 8 to 10 mil, but i got a 12 mil tool holder, which is the ones I use regularly. And yes, again, this was from RDG Tools, this one, but uh, it does actually fit. It sticks out a little way, but um, it does actually fit. So I'm just going to nip that into there just temporarily. Okay. So at least I can uh, have a look and see where we match up height-wise. So that's the tool post. It's going to go that sort of region somewhere. I have I'll add this on before and set the screw to where I want and with that tool on centre height I might have to move you around a bit guys oh, not used to this so that's a little low that's just okay so um, can you see you can't see a thing. Okay, might have to go handheld here. So let's just pop you out of a tripod. Should have got the GoPro for this, shouldn't I? So as we stand at the moment, we are sort of on centre. Yeah, close enough for you know approximation. And I have a gap under the bottom of the tool post, probably a mil or so underneath. Um, yeah, I can get my fingernail under there. So a 12 mil tool will achieve centre height with this tool holder. Um, if I were to thicken up on new tool holders, um, I wouldn't be able to use a 12 mil tool probably. If I was to add another 2 mil to the thickness of this bottom, then I'm going to be bottoming out on the tool post. So am I going to go with the 12 mils? Yeah, probably. Um, as I've got them anyway, and they're more of a style in both machines if I got the 12 mils. They'll work for this. This lathe's not going to do a huge amount of work, so that's good. So I'm going to take you back and put you back on the tripod, guys. 
So I've been messing about with this for a little while, seeing where the slide sits and where the tool post could go in relation to this block. And I've decided to put it flush on the back edge here and with the outside of the dovetail flush here. And that's where I'm going to put it. So I'll plot that out and we're going to get the tapped hole in the top of the block. Um, and then I think at a point about four mil out from the edge of the block, we'll put a chamfer down there down to about this height and something similar. So they blend in on the front. And yeah, that'll give us, you know, uh, or remove the flat surface that Swarf's going to stick on. So that'll be the next machining job. Okay, just mark uh, black area with a sharpie here. Oh, I mentioned, um, yeah, sharpies. Um, local supermarket, pack of 12 for six pound, Tesco's. Um, they're on offer, I think they're normally 12 pound, club card price thing, six pound. So yeah, 50 pence each. I don't know what that is in uh, dollars, cents, that sort of thing, probably 70 cents, something like that. So yeah, I thought it was reasonable. The only thing I didn't look too close, these are fine point. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, sometimes you want to find one. So here we are, pack a Sharpie, stick them in the drawer. So plan being, I'm gonna locate that on there. I'm gonna measure up the width of that and increase by four mil, scribe a line, same with that way scribe a line so uh, I shall do that next okay so I got my two lines drawn on there and I've decided to chamfer it down to that height um, so as you can imagine here there's going to be an angle between that line and that line and then so that the two meet up when I get round the front can I get you in there I'm handheld again guys uh, well yeah there's a line down there as well and obviously that'll match up with the line on the front so, uh, I'm actually getting a little bit of rust coming on the bed here. Um, I suppose it because it was dry and no oil on it. That's my own fault. Never mind, I can sort that out. So I've just nipped it in the vise. I put a parallel on the vise jaw. I've got an adjustable parallel. That looks good that side. This side's a little low. So that line across there lines up on the top of the parallel. That one lines up. Nip the vise. Take those away. And that's the angle I'm going to machine that. So I'll change over to a cutter and just machine that off. Then do exactly the same on the other side afterwards. Uh, same sort of setup. So yeah, middle of the time. Just under a mill, I think that is. I can see the line on the top. Um, yeah, it's point eight. Nice tip cutter in there. Eating it off. That is. So this should be the finishing cut. Let's just speed that cutter up a touch. Just a scratch pass. That's right on the line. Except it's not wide enough to do it in one pass. And it's on the line the other side as well. Okay, so that's um, that side done. So I'm not going to show you, but I'll set it up exactly the same in the other orientation. To remove this part and then we may put a, a nice radius on the edge something like that we'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so cast iron dust everywhere we need to get the vacuum out after so final pass
Okay, um, so that's the two champers done. Tapped hole in the top now in the right place. And then uh, a bit of prettification of it, make it look nice. And I think that's pretty much the riser block done. I've got parallel on the edge of my block. Okay, let's explain what I'm doing. I've got a spotting drill in the chuck. And that spotting drill, 10 mil, fits, it's a really nice fit down through the bore there. And it's deep enough that it'll just stick out the bottom if I want to drill with it. Right, okay. So, I've moved it across in X. Like a tiny bit more. Until that won't rock. on the. So I'm basically putting the parallel on the edge, hard against the edge of the block. And then brought it in, brought it in, until I can't get any twist. So I need to do the same on this side now. And as you can see, loads. So I'll just bring them in somewhere near first. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Still a touch. Well. Nothing. Okay. Oop. It feels to be overhanging just a touch. Let me just back it off just maybe a thou. Not too much. Let me just make sure that's square again. That's it. Yep, okay, so that's my position. Um, okay, uh, so I need to take the block out of the way now. So I just set a zero in there, so I'm staying in the same place. Okay, let's just take the head up. Oh. Uh, have I got the lock off? Yes. Just take my head up. Get the drill over that tool post, get the tool post out of the way, and I'll spot the hole. Um, block X and Y. Okay, back down again. Same point where I started. So, um, yeah, so spot drill in there. Will my head come low enough? I don't think it will. I'm going to have to come down. A little past that. Uh, so it's M10, so we'll get the tapping drill for M10 and we'll pop it in there. Am I going to run out of quill before I get through? I've got about two mil quill left. Right. Let me adjust my quill stops up a bit. I might get a bit more. So 8.5 drill for the M10. I've bottomed out. Let's try. Quill's bottomed out. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I may flip it over and just back it off, you know, because that's a long way to tap. Um, just back the hole off and just leave the top 10 mil uh, tapped or 20 mil maybe. Um, yeah, I probably will back it off on the underside. So we're drilled and tapped. And I'll still go backwards because I power tapped it. Just put a chamfer on there. Lovely. Nice big chamfer so the threads don't stick up. Um, yeah, that's the drill and tapped hole done. So the tool post should go on there now. Um, as I said earlier, I may make a replacement stud at some point for the tool post. But I think that's going to be more of an improvement I'll do rather than uh, something I'll do at this point. Um, yes, so... I'll probably use the existing stud, put the tool post on there, in fact, all my locations done now. Let's get the original stud. I've got it here, I will be back, I promise, here I come. Okay, you can see me machining two flats on that stud, um, to be able to tighten it correctly. Could do it with two nuts, I suppose, but uh, a couple of flats may be better. And that, well, feels pretty good. Uh, I think it was a 14 mil. Okay, 14 spanner. And that is, that fitted on there, with the chamfers done, we're getting somewhere now, guys. So, um, just going to bring this down for a touch. We'll call that zero. Okay, so uh, one mil side off. So set a zero on my quill. Uh, head locked. Table locked. Let's do two half mil passes. Half mil this way and back the other way. Measured up the shaft, 10 mil. It's half mil there, and that's one mil. Got the job in a square collet block, as you can see. Let's just wind that out of the way. Flip the collet block. Collet block's flush with the front of the vice so I can get the same spot. So flip the collet block 180. Back flush with the vice. Hold the collet block down. Wind back up again. Other side. Uh, so I'm going to go for a normal 8 mil for an 8 mil spanner. So set it at 0.5. Let's go to point 0.8. Try a spanner on there. So that's point 0.2 off uh, theoretical size. That's the spanner I tend to use more often than not. They're a little bit snug. Let's go to the final point 0.2. There, just just shy. That could be going a bit faster. Let's just try that. I think that might be a little snug. Ah, that'll be nicely. So two flats on, so at least I can tighten up that stud. I've run a stone over the top of this and tidied it all up, giving it a bit of a polish. Uh, now I need to give it a bit of a polish. I basically draw file it all over to get rid of the machining marks. So that's the stud in place that's the stud tight tool post on I can't square this up that's very really easy I can do that when we're on the uh, <coughs> square the tool post up to the chuck or what have you there's a spanner there it is 
Um, well, I won't be flipping this all the time, so I can't really see the need for a, um, you know, to put a, a handle on like I have my other tool post. Um, I'm going to fit the bar up that goes in here just to see what it looks like. I can see me changing that, or certainly the knob on the end of it. Um, yeah, so far so good. Let's just put a tool holder in there. It's looking good. Uh, bring it around the other side. So yeah, um, tool posts on. Uh, certainly a lot more rigid than the uh, than the cross slide would have been, or the compound would have been. Uh, this solid block. It's coming along nicely now. We're starting to get somewhere. Um, starting to look like a lathe again. So we got the tool post on. I just quickly put the handle in. Um, yeah, I mean it's there. Let's just pop that too low. It's a bit sharp in the way. Right. At this point, um, I showed you earlier I've got those oilers. So I want to put a couple of oilers in here. Um, that will replicate what's on the Warco. Um, so that I can lubricate the, the slide ways for the cross slide. And I'll probably put one in here and one in here. Um, for lubricating the carriage. Okay. So that said, I need at some point to fit the DRO. Now I've been toying about with this. So... Four methods. Um, we can fasten the rail to the cross slide and the reader head to the bed. We can fit the reader head or the, the rail to the bed and the reader head to the cross slide. Um, either way, it's going to work. You know, as the cross slide goes back and forth, so does the reader head. And if we did it the other way, um, this would have to be out here somewhere. And then as the bed goes forward, if this is fastened to this, as you can imagine, it's going to do this sort of idea. So that's the two ways. Um, obviously, another choice is, does it go on the front? Does it go on the back? No, does it go on the front or the back? Um, so I thought, I've got plenty of room on the front here. It comes underneath all the chuck and all the rest. And I'm only ever going to be turning small diameter stuff. I mean, I may have a mandrel with something bigger, but... Typically what will fit in the ER32, yeah, 22 mil, something like that. Um, maybe 25 mil, you know, there's lots of options, you know, I can probably do 50 mil in it. But if I have this on this side, it's not going to get in my way. And I don't know whether I can show, so if I have the... I can come right up to the end of my travel, which is way beyond the face of the collet chuck. Fasten that on there, fasten that to that. That'll go back and forth. It all goes back and forth across in front of the motor, which is useful. Um, so there's that. Um, the other option, obviously, is to mount it vertically, this sort, of, this sort of way. I mean, it, you know, that could be done as well, but I think it's more in the way. I think I'm, I'll mount it in this sort of plane. So if you can imagine, I can't show you from where you are, but it's going to be bolted on something like that, but on this side. And I'll bring you around the front and show you the two holes that are already there. So, going to go free form on the camera for a minute, guys. Bear with me. So try not to shake you about too much. So we can floating down around here. And as you can see, there's two tapped holes there already. M6s, I believe. So I'm going to utilise those. Um, that'll bolt the rail down. I may do a bit of notching and cutting of the rail. And obviously I'm going to need to make a hole of some description in the cross slide. So while I've got that off, I can do the two pockets for the... Um, where are we? Uh, I can do the two pockets for the oilers. So, yeah, I think I'll do... That'll be my next sort of uh, steps going forward. So two holes needed in the rail. I've just said to drill them. Um, 85 mil centre, so 5 mil in. 8 from the back edge in, 5 mil in and 85 centers this is going to drill through into that plasticky magnety strippy stuff on the other side but just take it gentle on that bit um right so back to zero and that should be the two holes that hold the rail may have to shorten the rail up a bit. I'll have it as short as I can. So I've got 75 millimetres of travel on my cross slide. So I need to allow for sort of 77, something like that. I did sit this on parallels in the vise here and then I've just popped the parallels out. So the little strip is under there. I could 
see it pushing down. Just hold it up while it drills through. I think it might burr over or do some horrible stuff on the other side of here. I seem to want to drill. Might just cut it away in the area of those holes. I think that's probably the best bet. Let's have a look what was going on. It probably would have been better drilling it the other way up. Um, which I could still do, I suppose. Let's pull it out and see what was going on there. Uh, brush. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty manky. I can remove all of this strip, this, this end actually. Probably will just take it off up to a point. Let's get a knife and cut it there, I think. Um, yeah, let's put it in the vise so I've got something solid to hold it on and then I'll cut it with a knife. It's not doing anything down that end. I got a sharp knife, yes. Okay, let's cut it. The oh, it's got sort of grittiness to it inside. It might be little fragments of some magnetic stuff. I don't know. Huh. It's like a like a glassy, plasticky film in here. I think I've taken the tape bit off and. This is like, it's not glass, it's like a plastic. Anyway, um, I'll get that out from where it is. I think that's just a covering. Maybe this is a bit that does the work. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll chip that out of there, <laughs> scrape it out, get it out from there. Um, I have cut through it there, I believe. Yeah. Nasty stuff, that's why it wouldn't drill. It's trying to drill through a bit of glass. <laughs> I'm just machining away the little channel that the tape, the magnetic tape was sat in. That's going to help matters. Help it to set, sit flat. Um, yeah, just a quick couple of passes. I'm very close to my vice here, probably point one. Just making a flat surface for it to sit down on against the uh, those two points where the bolt holes were. And a couple of little grooves to the outside edge, but they're not going to matter. Yeah, weird stuff, right? It was like a uh, a double-sided tape that was actually on the aluminium. And then some sort of brittle material. Not It's not a glass, or not a perspex, but it, it sort of felt like glass. And it cracked when I was peeling it off. I just dug a knife under it and peeled it off. And then obviously this black tape on top. So, yeah, obviously it's part of its makeup of some description, but yeah. Almost like glass with a magnetic or with a black tape on the top. I don't know what its uh, what its makeup is. It's got to be some sort of magnetic stuff in there, I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, I'm sure one of you out there knows, but uh, yeah, it's like a tape and then a glass, like a glass material. I can almost yeah. I mean, it, it it's sort of very stiff and brittle, and then. Like a double-sided gluey tape on the other side of that. Don't know. Don't know. And I'm sure somebody will come up with the answer, but uh, 
No, don't know. And as it stands, I don't find it that interesting to look it up. <laughs> okay, I got other things to worry about. So that's the two holes. Needs a little bit of tidying up and deburring. But there we are, we've just flattened that off and we got the two holes in there. Yeah, this is a bit scruff. Um, I'll have to just tidy that up a bit, get a file or something on it. Okay. So it's bolted on in position. Um, may have to play with it a bit to make sure that it's square to the slideway. Um, but that might mean slotting a hole or what have you. But yeah, I'm sure, sure I can sort that out fairly easily. So what I need now is a bracket. I'm going to bolt something on the side of here onto the top of here. I've got this bit of aluminium channel, uh, which basically will give me a piece of anger iron out of, uh, I think it's 5 mil thick. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the raw materials I use. I've already uh, put a hacksaw cut down, uh, where, well, you can see the hacksaw cut, um, on full length. So, yeah, I'll, I'll hacksaw a piece off roughly to shape and then machine it up and uh, make some sort of bracket. So that bracket's going to be for another video, guys. So, um, yeah, it was nice to get down in the shed and get a bit done. Um, yeah, nice to have those components come in, the uh, the ER32 collet truck and the tool post, and to start making some progress again on the machine. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do yet. Um, but, you know, step by step, I am getting there. Now, I did mention a new project. I'm going to build a... Weber engine. Um, oh, this one of these was built by Matty's workshop uh, last year, I believe it was. It might have been this year even. I think he built two at the same time. But I'm going to build one of those so that my next project is uh, going to be one of those. So that's going to be great fun, I'm sure. And there'll be lots of milling, lots of machining, lots of turning with that. Um, and I'm going to be sort of filtering in the progress of the uh, of the lathe along at the same time but I will be ordering material shortly for that so uh, that's going to be my winter project something to keep me out the pump um, but I finished machining for the day I've now got a clean t-shirt on and a shave and a shower um, and a can of lager is on the go so anyway guys as per usual thank you so much for watching subscribing and we will see you all very soon cheers now